Um, hey Sam, how was that welcome to you yesterday? Not your, your first one, but it's uh, always spoke yesterday about how special that was. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was. It's cool. It's. It's. I reckon it's the moment where it all becomes real and feels. The moment that hits you, we're at a World Cup now, putting on the number ones, the the welcome ceremony, and then getting presented with the cap and your World Cup medal. Um, yeah, you're right. Boys getting photos together um, to capture the moment, and uh, I suppose it's just such a, a long build up to get to this point. So there's a lot of excitement now, and that's the. Uh, the moment I reckon where it's like, right, we're into it. Ian, how important were those few days in Germany and, and what did you get out of Look, it's just, uh, you know, everyone's had to go somewhere and have a camp, haven't they? And so for us it was pretty special going to, you know, to, to, to Nuremberg, Herzo, and, and, you know, we've got a pretty special relationship with, with Adi Das, and so to be based there, you had three good training days, got a bit of a sense of the culture up there and and uh, and so yeah, no time well spent. Sam, from a leadership perspective, do you kind of try and take on yourself to help the younger guys who haven't been through this before, kind of help them stop from being a bit more developed? Oh, a little bit. I think part of it's like finding their own way and, and learning along the way. But I think part of our role as leaders is to use storytelling a little bit and, and share our stories and past experiences. Um, so. We do a, a little bit of that, um, but I suppose also like every World Cup's different, but the World Cups are certainly different from, from any other sort of tournament or like competition format we play, so yet we try and uh, yeah, just pass on I th- I think through, through stories. Um, and we've got a, pr- a pretty good group who, um, I think we've got a good, really good mix of experience. Um, and then a few guys who are just, just taking it all in and we just want them to be really about to just focus on their role within the team. <laughs> uh, more just drawing on sort of our past experiences and how um, each one's are, are slightly different um, and then talking about some of the similarities. So no particular stories that I'll, I'll share today, but yeah. Yeah, our day in Arras was was really special. It was a, a an incredible experience to have as a team. Um, first of all, going to Caterpillar, Caterpillar Valley Cemetery. Uh, there's over 5,000 graves there, and I think close to 3,000 of them are, are Kiwis. Uh, so, and, and one one All Black, um, Bobby Black. So that was quite a I think quite a moving experience for the team and then to go to the Wellington Tunnels and learn learn about what Kiwi soldiers went through um, along with the French over over a hundred years ago was was also incredible so um, you know they've left their mark on, on that area um, and it was just it was just nice for us to to go there and experience that as a team, um, learn a little bit about what they did and sacrificed, and um, it also gave us a, a real clear understanding of, of the connection between the two countries because of what we've been through together. Even it's different, so that means that you are in mission in France like them? S- sorry, what was that? Does it mean that you are in mission like them? Yeah, well, we've, we've, I suppose we do have, we've got a mission, we've got a goal, and that's to, to win the Rugby World Cup. Quite a different um, mission or goal to what, to what theirs was. Um, but yet we're, I think they would have been pretty determined um, men, and, and we certainly feel that we've got that about us too. Ian, has the past week and everything you've done been helpful to draw a line on the reset ahead of the World Cup? Yeah, I, I don't think. Sorry, I, I don't think resets the word. I think it's just been part of our program. You know, I think it's. Um, you know, whilst we didn't like the Twickenham result, it's. It, it was a. It was the tough warm-up game that we wanted, and. Um, and it highlighted some areas, and. And. 
I mean, if you look at the game, we, you know, what, what, what we learn is we're pretty vulnerable when we're a man down against line-out more. You know, we've conceded three line-out more tries or around the front and edge and the back in the second half. So, you know, we, we, we'll work hard on that, but it hasn't hasn't required a reset. It's just required us to get into the next phase of our, our preparation, and that's what Germany was about. And and now it's uh, all in a distant past, really. It's uh, just getting excited about round one, and then round two, and then round three, and then round four, and then round five. France have lost in the last few days. Jonathan Dante, Paul Billings to injury. Does that sort of suggest this World Cup could be bad for attrition, given Injuries have seen already, including Yeah, well, we've, you know, with with the likes of Brody, Shannon, um, we came over here with a, a couple of digs. We got another one with Tyrell in the Twickenham Test. So, well, I think every team has to get used to that. And to be fair, that that's World Cups, and you know, this year we've. You know, we've all got an extra squad member, so a squad of 33. I guess there's an extra week in the campaign with a bye week. So, you know, in many ways, hopefully that 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 situation gets mitigated downwards from previous World Cups. But um, that's a reality. It's why you've we've worked hard to try to build depth over the last year or so, and because you everyone's going to want to make those changes seamlessly. Uh, we normally have a pretty even split, like during training of what we call units, like forwards and backs. But like a lot of our time has certainly gone into um, line out more defence. We also want to make sure our ball's really good, so it's been we've been focusing on some of the little aspects of um, you know winning line out ball, and then it's been quite a bit going into scrum time as well. So um, that's the beauty, I suppose, of having a camp without having a game in the weekend. I think. We haven't had anything like that this year, mm. so um, been able to sort of dig a little bit deeper in some areas and tweak some techniques and try some new things. Um, just having that that time to try it and, and see if that works, and if not, then yeah, it's been good. Yeah, are you happy with where the four packs are at the moment? Pardon? Are you happy with where the four packs are at the moment? Yeah, well, you know we've had a we've had a strong campaign up until that game. I think when you look at that game with the amount of changes that went on, the cards, the early injuries, there was a lot of disruption playing the South Africans one man down with you know some young players on the park. It was a, it was a great learning curve so um, so we're happy with our pack. Yeah we are but we know we've got to get better. Um, it's been an area of strength for us so I think um, and you know you've got to remember that teams have to grow through this tournament. I know we all want to present ourselves at, at, at the at the peak of our powers at the start, and we're all trying to do that. But um, it's how we grow through it, and, and you know, you, you want to be there at the end. And to do that, you've got to get better each day. Sam, um, a, a bit of a random one, granted, but I understand the rooms that you're in at the Ruck, um, a lot of them, if not all, actually have a picture of Richie lifting the World Cup trophy. Have you have you seen that, and what was your reaction to it? Uh, not in my room. <laughs> have you? Um, <laughs> which rooms have you been in, Kimberly? Out of out of interest. In your room? No, oh, well, she hasn't been in my. I don't think she has been. But. I've got one of those rooms where, you know, there's a door towards the next room. So if you unlock it, and the other person lock, unlocks theirs on the other side, you can get through. And um, as we got to the room, I realised Brody was my next door neighbour. So we opened up and compared rooms. But I don't think he's got. I don't think he's got one of those either. What the him and Brody are sleeping in the same room <laughs> with adjoining doors, not yeah. with his snoring. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all special is this uh, few months moment for you as a last dance with the, his, as a head coach of the All Blacks. How special is it? Uh, it? It's it's another World Cup. It's always special with the All Blacks. Sam, what sort of environment do you expect to walk into next Friday at the start of the process? Uh, probably, probably one we haven't experienced before. I think the the excitement, like the excitement of playing a World Cup in a in a country where you know that they'd be close to being one of the favourites. Um, so yeah, that will just 
I think that the, the people and the crowd, the atmosphere will just, there's been, this game's been coming for a long time. Um, and the public know that and everyone knows it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if we can you know, fully prepare for, for what it'll be, but I think if we just realise like it's going to be an awesome occasion and get excited by it, um, and however loud, um, we'll just feed off that energy and, and enjoy it. Yana, yeah, can uh, understand the video analysis of the Springbok uh, lineup moves helps to understand the defeat, but how uh, uh, intellectually, but how emotionally you overcome this so-called uppercut? What's the process emotionally for the guys to, I mean, after 11 wins, you have such a brutal defeat? defeat. It was a beautiful day out there, Kareem. I woke up really happy this morning. Went for a lovely walk, and now you've asked me about that again. So, this is for the white audience that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Here it goes. Um, f first lesson: have 15 men on the field. You know, when you lose an experienced, um, the guy who's been your power player, um, and you lose him from your, from your pack, then you, you do become very vulnerable. And, and that's, that's one key lesson, and that's going to be a big lesson going into the World Cup that we all know, but we just got to make sure that we, we really work hard on the discipline side of our game to keep 15 on 15. If, if we've got 15 on 15, I'm, I'm very confident in that space. What we had to do is we had to, we had to adapt to a strategy. We, we had Josh Lord come on, we had um, Tamati Williams, we had Fletcher Newell. Fletcher hasn't played much rugby this year. Tamati's only played a couple of test matches and there's some massive learning going on there and how the speed that you have to react against a very experienced Springbok team and the, and the way that they utilise their front and their back particularly well so they only had one line out more go through us so that they were smart and they were smart against a team with a with a red card so um, the, the lessons are pretty simple to be honest I don't think there's anything there that we we don't really know we just got to get better and better at, but it's certainly it's opened the door for others to, to come and try to exploit that, and we've got to make sure we respond. The problem of discipline, is it like to be, to be on the back foot, or is it emotional? Well, I think early on, we, we had a, I, I think there was two lots of discipline in that game. I think there's one where we, we had to be disciplined to what the, how the ref was ruling uh, the, the structure of a line-out more starting. Obviously, they didn't, they felt that we were initiating contact. We felt that they were throwing their line out people across, and um, and still do, by the way. And um, but we had to make, we were the team that had to make the adjustment, and we were slow to do that. But when we did it, the, the first half we actually did really well in that space. And really, it was the second half when we were one man down, and they were able to exploit that, and we'd made a number of changes. So. Oh, I'm not making too much of it. Yes, we're, we're not ignoring it. Yes, we worked hard on it. Um, but psychologically, I don't think it's a big step back for us. The French has a referee embedded, Jérôme Gasses, working with the French team. Have you decided to choose not to have a referee? Well, we've had a ref um, in regularly this year. We had a, uh, a top ref with us in Germany, for example, for the whole camp. Um, so. Uh, we, we've, we've, we've always been working with refs and behind the scenes, we just don't have one, uh, a retired ref embedded in our organisation. Probably haven't got the same amount of money the French have got. Sam, how, following off that, how much is that on you to make sure you're communicating with the referee and getting on the side with the maturing model at the start of the game? Coach has mentioned about the jump across the line, so how do you get across to the referee like, yeah, I think the key is is really to to start well, um, because the referees are always heightened to look for things at the start of the game. Both teams are are really eager to get into it, and there's often more penalties sort of in that first 20 minutes than there is in in most games. So um, if we can start well, and that mainly includes having the ball, um, which isn't always possible, um, that that goes a wee way. Um, in terms of you know the question about the lineout jumpers coming over as soon as we recognised it, which was, you know, I think they had two malls by that stage. Um, then, then I went over and, and let the referee know that and I think after that, um, 
maybe he, he was more aware of it and we also made some small adjustments so um, I don't think you'll ever change a referee's mind once he's made a decision so mine, my thought process is there's no point arguing a decision that's already been made all you can do is try and sort of embed little thoughts or plant seeds um, going forward to hopefully um, you know influence ever so slightly but um, yeah Are you a profiler? Do you have a like uh, profiling of the referee? The way they, they want to be connected, the way to talk to them, the body language. Yeah, we do a little bit of work behind the scenes, just um, having a a general awareness of um, you know areas of the game that they like to to go hard at. Um, you know, it's often often very similar to like off side lines breakdown players rolling away they want a, a clear fast game um, and then in terms of communication a, again I think it comes down to a little bit of, of getting a feel for how the game is um, what pressure the referees under and ultimately being trying to be really smart and picking and choosing a time to bring up a point with a referee um, where he's not under pressure where there's downtime in a game so that he can hear you out and you can hear him out. Um, often it's it's pretty full on out there um, and sometimes those moments don't always present themselves. So, um, yeah, just about trying to be smart and get a feel for the game, really. And, um, on the very small that you talking to Eddie Jones earlier in the week, that dark moment, he was kind of saying, you know, his opinion, he favours defensive-minded teams. Do you have a, a similar thought process about how you approach that? Uh, look, not really. We're not going to talk about referees for a World Cup in terms of our thoughts on them but it's you know Yako is a very experienced referee he's been picked for a reason for, for the game one I assume and um, and I'm sure he's going to have a clear plan about how it goes but like like Sam said we, we've we have we have history we, we have experience of of what refs uh, some of the idiosyncrasies I guess just like they have of us and um, and so we, we, we'll go in pretty well informed about how he'll ref and um, and I'm sure he's the same as everyone, you know, he'll be excited about a pretty special occasion and it, it's probably for him a great honour to ref that first game, I'd say. And for the French, uh, for the last year, the, the first game is the, the final before the final, but does it change something to finish first or second in this group for you? And what do you do to uh, It doesn't change a lot when you look at, you look at the other pool for the crossover, so not really. I always finish first. I'd like to keep things simple. Ian, in the last few days since that Swiffin and there's been a bit of consternation about the box seven one bench and whether it should be legal or whether it should be a tweak to the, the rules. Um, do you have a view on that? No, they can do whatever they like. It's um. You know, we, we did a 6-2, we, we did ours out of necessity because we had injuries and and we wanted to be able to uh, take some players off just after half time, some of our experienced players, just to make sure that we managed the squad to get to the starting line here. Um, but maybe that was the reason they did theirs. Um, but, you know, winners are gritters, it's a great strategy because they won. Cool, thanks team, we'll bring in the next group. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.